In this beginner-friendly tutorial, I will show you how to easily model hair using three simple but effective methods in Blender with the help of our girl from last week's video. I will also end the video with some important tips on hair, so make sure to stick to the end. Enjoy! Okay, let's get right to it. So here we have Owl Girl, and as you can see, I took three steps to create her hair. The first one is a method that I use to basically fill up the volume of the hair real fast and also create the basic shape. I usually do that with sculpting, which is the case over here. The second one is where I started refining the look of the hair and adding bigger hair strands, and I did this with modeling. Finally, last but not least, we have the little hair strands. It might be a small thing, but it really adds to the aesthetic of the character. So we're gonna talk about all of these methods and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick look at the final result of the hair. And as you can see, really nice design, looking smooth, looking nice looking really clean and what we're gonna do is remove the third and the second stage of the hair we're gonna create a uv sphere so shift a mesh uv sphere and that's pretty much how i start any character's hair once i do that i go to the sculpt mode you can start with a symmetry if it works well with your character it depends on what kind of design you're going for for this demonstration i'm just gonna go ahead without any symmetry over here and i'm gonna use the big brush over the right and just push any big strokes that I want. So let's say I want to make the right side longer. Let's imagine that I'm starting from scratch and there is no hair. And this is what I like to do. I like to just make really big shapes and I'll explain a bit more on how you basically design hair and how to go on about planning ahead with a few examples from real people's hair, so real female models that I found online at the end of this video. So make sure to watch it till the end and you'll get all of the spicy information. So as you can see over here, I'm just pulling the hair, I'm pulling the big sphere and I'm not worried about the detail size for right now. I am not worried about the hair details either. So I'm not worried about hair strands or any crazy thing like that, you know, leave that later until you get a decent look. So if it doesn't look good without getting into details, there's no point in going further. You gotta fix the design first, right? So here you can see I'm getting something very, very close to what we have, which is the point. I don't really wanna spend hours on this tutorial and bore you guys with information that is repeated right so once you do that as you can see i can play around with the big shapes i can even maybe push hair hair over here a bit more see what it gives maybe even like push some hair in front of the eyes make it cover the eyes so just like that okay and once you do that once you're happy with the initial design what you can do is go to dynamic topology you activate it you can play around with the detail size so i'll just keep it at six for now doesn't really matter you can play around with this later on and you can start adding details so if you go to the scrape brush over here and make sure that let's see if i go to curve make sure that it is at flat i already made a beginner blender tutorial on sculpting go check it out if you didn't yet and once you do that you can start refining the hair as much as you want so i'm just gonna do a really quick one over here don't worry i'm not gonna bore you guys with this there is no point right and once you're done with this let's say i refined it enough you can go for example to the pinch brush so this one over here and you can get closer to add more details because right now i am at relative detail so the closer i am to the mesh the more amount of details it will add okay so here i can just really refine the edges of the hair as much as i want and i can always go back to the scrape brush and do the same i can even further refine it right and this is basically how i created this first step so if i can delete this there you go this is how i created this part of the hair and that's pretty much how i do it for every other character on my channel let's hop to the second stage of the hair creation which is these big hair strands this is actually quite simple to do it's a different method than the first one just hit the shift a button to create a plane and once you do that you're gonna get something similar to this 
And then you can add two modifiers. So the first one is the solidify modifier and the second one is the subdivision surface. Okay, for the solidify modifier, you can increase the thickness over here to whatever you want, depending on the style you're going for. And you can increase the subdivision surface view to maybe three, depending on your object. If you increase it over two, make sure to do the same for the render so that when it renders out, it takes it into account. Okay. So what we're going to do is hit the tab button to go to edit mode and then control tab to switch from vertex mode to edge selection mode. And we will grab the lower edge. You can pull it down and then grab the whole thing with a S for scale X for the X axis and scale it on the X axis to make it thinner like so, maybe even a bit more. So there you go. And then we can go back to the vertex selection mode. So control tab again, we're going to grab this one over here and pull it upwards. So I'm basically creating the shape over here. Okay. So once you're done with that, I'm going to go back to control tab edge. I will grab the upper edge over here and I will extrude it with the E button and then create the curve that we can see over here on the female model. So once we're done with that, we need to add some supporting edges because as you can see at the end over here, it is a curve and we are looking for something more smooth like this one. Okay. So to do that, control R, it will add a ring, select and then slide it down to as close as possible. And then do the same for the sides to get something even sharper on the sides. So control R and slide it to the left. Control R, select, slide and select again to apply. Once you're done, you'll notice that it looks almost exactly like the hair over here. Okay. Right now, I think we can make it a bit thinner since we added the supporting edges. We have a better visual on what it looks like. There you go. And once you're done with this, you can duplicate it with the shift D button on object mode. So I went out of the edit mode over here and I can put it on the sides so that if I need it later on, I could use it because I will modify this one so that it goes with the character. If you have a character with different hair types, different hair strands, you can create more than one shape and do the same as I'm doing over here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just grab this hair and then go to the edit mode with the tab button and I will rotate it. So I'll grab everything with a and rotate it with R like so, and try to place it the same as the first one. There you go. And I will go back to object mode, push it upwards, edit mode again. And I will basically just try to place it and make it look the same as I did at the beginning with the character. Once you're done with that, you can play around with the shape. If you go to, for example, vertex mode, so control tab vertex and down over here, you switch to, let's see, enable. So this is the proportional editing. So if you hit enable, what it does is if I grab, let's see, maybe I'll add an edge loop. So control R over here. Okay. So if I grab this edge over here and I move it around, you can see this big circle and it will affect the vertices that are close to it. To control the side of the, the size of the circle, you can do that by using the wheel mouse. So if you scroll it upwards, it'll make it smaller. And if you scroll it downwards, it'll make it bigger and control basically more vertices as you can see. So I'm going to do that to basically play around with the shape. I can also grab these over here. So I just use the B button for box selection mode and grabbed the lower vertices and I can use the R button to rotate as you can see as I want and I can push it around and get a really nice shape. I can even go to the side. Always make sure that you're doing it from all sides. There you go. Maybe even create a different style over here. So I'm going to grab these edges over here and make the circle a bit smaller and then rotate it and put the hair strand over her eyes. There you go. So this is basically what I did for the rest of the hair strands. I just 
kept on playing around with it, like so. And by the way, the way I'm selecting the edges this way is with the Alt and Shift button and then just click on any edge and it will grab the edge loop. So Alt, Shift, click, and there you go. So yeah, just move the vertices around till you get the shape that you want. Once you're done with it, you can just grab the other one. So maybe this one, since I really missed the size, the shape of the first one, you can duplicate it with Shift D and then again, just move it around, place it anywhere else and then play around with the shape. So this one, just Alt Shift, I'll grab the edge loop and I can play around with the shape to make it look more natural. So maybe grab the edge loops over here, rotate it, and there you go. So we get something a bit different from the beginning. We could obviously fix the shape over here. Let's just do it real quick so it does not look so weird. There you go. And that's about it for the second stage of the hair. So let's go to the third one. For the third and final stage of the hair, we will create these little hair strands with curves. Now I really love this method. It gives you a lot of control and I actually usually use it with the second stage of the hair as well, depending on the shape you're going for. So let's get right to it. I'm gonna hit the end button and remove the only render so that we can see the curves. Shift A to create the curve and create a path and then create a circle and another path with shift A. So give me a second, I'll explain why I'm doing that. So this first one over here is basically what will be the hair curve and these two will control the bevel and taper of the curve. So if you grab the first one and go to this icon over here, so it's the icon for the curves, you can go down to the bevel object and taper object and once you select this one, you can select the circle. So we're gonna use the circle to control the bevel and basically the shape of the curve. And then we will go to the taper object and select the NURBS path, which is this line over here. You can name the items over here so that you don't get confused. But anyways, let's move on. So first thing you want to do is go to the top tab to go to the curve mode and you want to play around with the taperness. So let's say I want this side over here to be wider. I'm going to pull it upwards. You can pull this one as well to create a nice taper over here. And you can play around with this later on to play around with the shape of the hair, even after you place it on the character, which is why I really love this method. You just get a lot of control. Once you're done with that, let's play around with the shape of the hair. So let's go to the circle tab and we can start playing around with the vertices to get something, let's see. So if I grab this one over here with these two points and push it downwards, if we take a look at the bottom, it looks like this. So I'm basically flattening it out. We can do the same over here to get a flatter look for the hair. There you go. And you can grab the middle one and maybe even pull it up a bit to get this fine edge on the top. And then I can grab these points over here and with the S button, hopefully this will work. S and then let's see the Y axis. I can make the edges over here closer to get a sharper edge over here. And then I will go back to the taper and probably play around a bit with the shape to get something more natural like so. And this is actually very, very similar to what the hair strands look like. So I will grab the hair strands, get a bit closer and show you what it looks like close up. So you can see at the top, there's this really sharp edge and it pretty much looks the same. So once you're done with that, we will grab the main one and duplicate it with Shift D. We can scale it down if you want to. You can grab it, let's say, put it over here, right? And then go to edit mode, so tab, grab a point and you can play around with the points as you can see like so and then you can extrude it with E to create a longer strand and just turn it around and do whatever you want with it. And that pretty much sums it up 
on how I did the hair strands, the really small ones. You can obviously do the big ones as well. It was just a bit simpler to model this specific shape, but generally I actually do the hair with curves. Okay, so once you're done with it, you can hit the Alt C and then select the mesh from curve meta surf text. If you do that and go to the edit mode again, you won't get the curve anymore, but you will get the geometry, which will allow you to unwrap it and texture it later on. And that pretty much sums it up for the three stages of the hair that I used on Owl Girl. Before I let you guys go, here are a few tips on the hair, how to analyze it, how to prepare for it, for your character, plan ahead, and learn from reference. If you guys enjoyed the video up until now, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Anyways, let's move on. So what I like to do when I'm trying to learn something is break it down into simple parts. So, just like in the sculpt in the first stage, I broke down the hair into three different parts. You can also break it down into two parts, so the head hair and the hair bun. Anyways, moving on, we're gonna get to stage two and add some hair strands as you can see over here. Do not overdo it. You'll notice that even in the sculpt, I added a few. It looks a lot more appealing when you do that because I see sculptors usually trying to add every single hair strand and sculpt it. Honestly, it, it just kills the hair for the character. It usually turns out to look horrible. Very rarely it will work with the character, it depends on the character style. So if you want to go for something realistic, go for hair particles, that's fine. But again, usually, especially for stylized characters, I personally prefer this style, you know, very stylized, simplistic way of doing the hair. And you'll see a lot of great, you know, painters, concept artists on ArtStation. You can see when they do the hair, they usually don't add all of the details. They just focus on the shapes. If the shapes look good, the hair is gonna look good. Anyways, once you're done with this, we get to the stage three. And for me, this is as far as I would go on adding details. I think just adding a few hair strands here and there, it's a bit of an overkill in this case. But the point here is that hair is not perfect and it just adds this really nice appeal to the character. That's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on character and art related stuff, such as art advice, time-lapse videos, fan art from time to time, and some tutorials here and there probably even more stuff anyways every thursday 8 p.m ct you guys know the drill i will see you guys in the next one make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome character sculpts and art related videos you can also check out my store for full courses on character sculpting texturing materials brushes and more last but not least if you enjoyed this video then you will definitely enjoy the next one